Amen. It's a blessing to be here, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Uh, so I have a question for you. Do you know that God is a good God? Yes, he is. Amen. Yes. God is a good God. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was thinking about his goodness this morning, and I just got extremely happy about it. I said, Lord, you know, you just, uh, you have always come to see about me. I don't know about you, but, you know, I'll just ask, have you ever been troubled in your mind? And then, you know, you talk to the Lord about it. And, and, and when you talk to the Lord about it, you knew that the trouble was still there, but you felt better about it after you talked to the Lord. Have you ever, ever, ever done that? And have you ever been sick in your body and, you know, you're just, just sick enough? Sometimes you feel like you're sick enough to die. And God just comes to see about you. Makes it all right. Amen. And I don't know about you. Y'all know me when I don't have any money. And when my money is funny, that worries me. And when you don't have the money to do what you need to do. But have you ever talked to the Lord about it? And everything seemed all right. You know, you know, you know, you still got the bills. But when you talk to the Lord about it, he gives you some assurance, some kind of way that it's going to be all right. And so I thank God for the assurance that he gives us. I thank God for how he continues to come to see about us. And I just thank him this morning. And so I thank God this morning for the Lord's Academy and how God is blessing us as we're uh, going through the Bible. It is a blessing to be able to open up the word of God. Amen. And it's a blessing to see what he says about it. And, and we are learning and we're growing. And I just thank God for that. I thank God for the journey that we're on. So we're still in the chaotic kingdom. That's a long, it's a long study in the chaotic kingdom because it covers a, a, a real a vast period of time, and it's a dark, dark part of Israel's history. But it's a part that we need to understand because even though it is about Israel, we can see how sometimes we act the same way and sometimes how we do some of the same things. And so then uh, Paul says that these things were written for our learning. Uh, and so we look at them so we can see what happened in their history so that maybe uh, there might be a chance that we will sidestep some of the things that they did. Maybe a chance that we can do, do that. And so if you have your Bibles, open up your Bible to, you can turn that down just a tad bit, to uh, 2 Kings, the 18th chapter. 2 Kings, the 18th chapter. I hope that's me talking loud. Okay. Okay. Well, I say turn to 2 Kings, the 18th chapter, but before you turn there, let's go to... Um, Let's go to 2 Chronicles, the 28th chapter. So we're getting ready to switch uh, over. We had been talking about or spent most of our time in the kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom, the northern kingdom. And we know over in the northern kingdom, they really didn't have a chance because every leader that they had was wicked. So how many of you know you got to have somebody, if you're leading somebody, you know, people watch you when you lead. That's why you're the leader. And people watch you, and, and, and sometimes people begin to emulate you as the leader. And so it's very important who you have out in front. It's very important who you have out in front, because not only, you know, as adults, but I'm talking about as uh, you got children coming along. Children looking at the leader, you know, you got other people who want to lead looking at the leader. And so, you know, it's very important. Lady Deborah, what I see in the church is the leaders are chosen to what's best for the leader and not what's best for the people. Because I see you have a preacher and, and maybe he is called a pastor, and he does fairly well. But then when he gets ready to leave off the scene, now he's got people that God has raised up around him who've been faithful, who could carry on. Mm -hmm. But he got a son that just in the back door. He'll take, he'll sneak and take, he'll take him off and ordain him. 
and he's your next pastor. So you, because you, you're trying to keep the money in the family or whatever, and what you've done is, is that that's for your benefit and not for the people. And the Bible says he gave some apostles, I mean, some pastors, some, you know, and it's for the edifying of the body, for the perfecting of, of, of the saints. And so when, you, when that happens, to me, Satan has, but you're just selfish. And you're not thinking about the people, you're just thinking about you, and that's what you leave. Yeah, that's, that is a selfish administration, and actually that's what was going on. Uh, when we look at the chaotic kingdom, just selfishness. You do what uh, you think is best for you. So does anyone else have a comment on what Pastor Bland has stated? Do you, do you but Lady Deborah, I, I, I would give them a bit bigger pass because that was God's plan. Yes. You, you, it came down Definitely. through. Definitely. But, I mean, that's not now. Yeah. Your son has no right to pastor the church just because he's your son. True, true, true. True. I agree. I agree. I agree. Anyone else? Comment? Comment? Okay, it's the Lord's Academy, so you're free to talk. Okay? You can, this is the time we can talk. You can't stop Pastor when he's standing on those chairs. But, 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 you, can, but you can stop me. I tried that. I told him one morning. Now that you bet not stand in the chair. Do you, but would you believe he got up in the chair anyway? But it, it shows you how much attention he pays to what I say. Okay, well, we want you to stay in the spirit. <laughs> Praise him. Amen. So we're talking about, we're, we're changing over. You know, last, last week we talked about how uh, the northern kingdom ended up going on to Assyria. Assyria came in and besieged them. He said, as we were read, they, uh, that siege lasted about three years. So then, you know, as the siege went on, then, you know, you have... Uh, less food, you have less traffic coming in if it's not, you know, the traffic of uh, the people that's coming in during the siege. And remember we said that uh, when they came in and they took over a place, they repopulated it. So when they repopulated it, they repopulated it with Gentiles. And, and you remember I said they come in and, and, and the king of Assyria believed that, you know, every god, he, he believed that the god of the nations, you know, that uh, when you placed them in there, uh, you, you talk about the god of the nation, but when he placed the, the Gentiles in Israel, they didn't know how to tell them how to worship the god of Israel. That was a sad commentary because, you know, they had fallen and sunken so low in degradation that you don't even, you can't even be, uh, you can't even talk about, be a witness for and talk about how to worship your God. And he's your God. And so that was a, that's a sad commentary. And as I said earlier, it's just a very dark period. Uh, in, in Israel's history, but just a very dark period in Israel's history. So Hashua was the last king of uh, the kingdom, the northern kingdom. And he reigned nine years. Hashua reigned nine years. And then we move over uh, to talk about, to begin talking about the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah. And we're going to start talking about him by talking about Ahaz, just very brief, briefly, Ahaz, in 2 Chronicles, the 28th chapter. Are you there? So uh, Ahaz, now, we're leading up to talk about Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a godly king. Hezekiah was a godly king. And you wonder sometimes, as we read about Ahaz, his father, how can someone so godly come from someone so silly? But have you ever seen that to happen? You ever seen that to happen? So, you know, that's the way God does that. That's, <laughs> that's the way God does that. So in chapter 28, 2 Chronicles, it says Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David, his father. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images for Balaam. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also and burnt incense 
in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. And I'm giving you the talking about Ahaz for just a moment because I want you to see what Hezekiah, uh, who succeeded him, what Hezekiah had to come into. All right. Now, this is what his father did. Mm -hmm. So uh, going over to Second uh, uh, Chronicles, the 28th chapter, and look down at the 20th verse. Are you there? Uh, Second Chronicles 28. I'm going to give you just a minute or two. Second Chronicles 28. I want to see you pronounce this. I know you can do it. All right. Okay. And Tiglath Pilnetsar, king of Assyria, came unto him and distressed him, but strengthened him not. For Ahaz took away a portion out of the house of the Lord and out of the house of the king and of the princes and gave it unto the king of Assyria, but he helped him not. And in the time of his distress, did he trespass yet more? In the time of his distress. Okay, so then Assyria comes over. You, do, you got to pay. You remember when, that's what it means when it says you're a vassal state. It says you're subjected to uh, uh, the person who's over you. So then you have to pay tribute to them. You have to do what they tell you to do. And so in him paying tribute then, he, he took uh, out of the Lord's house. He took out of the Lord's house and to help make up for that, he took some of his own stuff and gave it to the king, but that wasn't good enough. And in the time of his distress, now you, 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 you okay. All right, y'all, you in trouble. Now, remember I started out by giving my testimony. When you trouble in your mind, you got the trouble, trouble everywhere. But, but, but you turn to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. But instead of you turning to the Lord, instead of you turning to the Lord, he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus, which smote him. And he said, because the gods of the king of Syria helped them, therefore will I sacrifice to them. And you're looking across the fence and you're thinking that the, their gods are helping them. So you're like, okay, I see that they're, they're advancing. They're doing better than we're doing over here. So it looked like I need them to go ahead and make a sacrifice to their God. Uh, it says, uh, will I sacrifice to them that they may help me, but they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God and shut up the doors of the house of the Lord and he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem and in every city of Judah. Now, you know, we, we talked about, we talked about the kingdom of Israel and how, how they were, they were idol worshipers for real. Now we over here in the city of David. We're over here in, 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 in Judah, the southern kingdom. And we're talking about the same thing that took them on away with Assyria. We're talking about the same trespass that they're committing now over in the city of David. Talking about where you got the temple there in Jerusalem, where uh, God had ordained that everybody right, would come right. back to Jerusalem to worship. But now you got idol worship going on. You got the king. You got the leader. You got the one who's supposed to be the example. Doing everything but what he is supposed to do. And so it says that he shut up the doors of the house of the Lord. And he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And in every several city of Judah, he made high places to burn incense unto other gods and provoke to anger the Lord God of his fathers. Now, the rest of his acts and uh, all his ways, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. 
And they had slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, even in Jerusalem. But they brought him not into the sepulchers of the kings of Israel. And Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his stead. Okay, so now you see the backdrop that Hezekiah is coming in too. So I want you to go to 2 Kings, the 18th chapter. We're going to come back to 2 Chronicles. But I want you to go to 2 Kings, the 18th chapter. Okay, so when we began to look at, when we began to look at Hezekiah and his reign and the way we're studying it, just, just as a note, the sequences of events that's recorded uh, for his life are not really like recorded in order. So some of this may sound like, well, that should have happened uh, some time ago. So just keep that in mind that when we flip back and forth, it's not really uh, sequential. It's not like it happened one thing that happened right after the other. So keep that in mind. So Hezekiah, Hezekiah, the Bible says, now it came to pass, 2 Kings 18 chapter, now it came to pass in the third year of Hashua, the third year of Hashua, the last king of uh, the northern kingdom, the last uh, king of the northern kingdom, Hashua, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abi, or Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. So Hezekiah means the Lord strengthens. The Lord strengthens. And you know, in the biblical days, names were very important. Uh, and so, as they are now, you know, watch what you name your child, but um, as they are now. So the Lord strengthened. And, and I say on the slide, Hezekiah needed the strength of the Lord because he had something uh, ahead of him that he had challenging ahead of him. Pastor Blaine? Now, I was just thinking that one of the tricks I think of Satan is, is that a lot of church people would name their children after biblical, you know, name, you know, give them biblical names. And, I mean, that's fine, but you have to understand that that doesn't save you just because you got those, those biblical names. That's just thought I had. Okay, Pastor, thank you. Okay, so uh, as we began to study Hezekiah and uh, how he reigned, uh, just keep in mind that he was one of the few kings who actually did remove the high places and put an end to idol worship in the hills. Okay, so second chapter, uh, or the second kings rather, the 18th chapter. Uh, we're going to go over to Chronicles to, to start this, but I want to start out in 2 Kings because 2 Kings mentions how Hezekiah destroyed the bronze serpent made by Moses. You remember the story of that serpent? Let's just, let's just go back to Numbers 21 for just a minute to look at that. Numbers 21. Numbers 21, and I'll start reading uh, at the fourth verse. Numbers 21, I'll start reading at verse 4. Okay, so this is the children of Israel, you know. They're traveling. They're traveling. They're on their way. Uh, they're on their way from Egypt. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea. To come, to come past the land of Eden. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God. And then I say again, you wait right until you get in trouble. That's the wrong time. The wrong time to speak against God. That's the wrong time to complain. 
It's the wrong time to look for somebody else to help you when you're in trouble. The people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye, wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathe this light bread. <laughs> God feeding you all the time. God feeding you all the time. You crying with a loaf of bread under your arm. You know? Uh-uh. What, what is that about? What is that about? Y'all, I tell you what, it's nothing like a person who's grateful, mother. Grateful. It's nothing like a person who's grateful, and it's nothing as sadder than a person who's ungrateful. It's nothing sadder than a person who's ungrateful. That is one of the worst things. It's ugly. It's ugly. Ungratefulness is ugly. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we're talking. My mama taught me, and I taught it to my children. Child, you better be grateful for whatever anybody does for you because no one has to do anything for you. And whatever they do, no matter how small you think it is, the words that come out of your mouth ought to be thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so God, our Father, who right. gives us right. good right. things, right. when he gives us good things, we don't turn our nose up to what God does for us. Whatever he does, we say thank you. Amen. Whatever he does. Even though you know and in your stuff, even what we're going through, and I look at it like this, Yolanda, because when we go through, y'all, things don't go like we want them to go. <laughs> Things are, you know, they don't go like we need them to go all the time. But even in that, things could be so much worse yes. than what they are. And so you still say, thank you, Lord, that things are as well as they are. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, because you didn't have to do it. But now, now, now that I'm 60 years old, I have a better understanding of grace. I have a better understanding of mercy. And I have a better understanding that, Lord, you didn't give me what I deserve. You don't give me what I deserve. And so I thank you for your mercy this morning. Not only that, Lord, but I thank you that every day I get up, you got some mercy waiting on me. Got some mercy waiting on me. And, and I tell y'all all the time, I need it. Amen. I need mine. I don't know about you, Amen. but I need mine. And so when you're in trouble, that's the time to cry out to the Lord. It's not the time to look. look and, and that's not the time to look and say, nah, -uh, what, 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 how did we get here? And, what, and what, you brought us out here to die. You should have just let us die. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Exactly, exactly. The time and the, 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 just to see, okay, who, who, whose side are you leaning on? Where you going to lean? Are you going to run to Egypt for your help? But Deborah, I, I think that the storm comes to show you that you can't stand it. Mm. <laughs> that you need help. Yes. Because until the storm come, I'm cool. All right, all right. And then you can be a help to someone. Yes, else. yes. You tell somebody else that's right. going through that. Hey, I've been there. Yeah. And uh, he brought me through it. Yeah. And if you hold on, if you just grab just a little faith and hold on to that, he'll bring you on. Yes, he will. Come on now. That's the truth. Now you're telling me nothing that's happening to you, no temptation is taking you as such that it's common to man. Nothing. The ship will be destroyed. Yes. Grab a plane. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Come on now. Come on. And so, so, so now they're complaining. They are complaining to the Lord, and the Lord is feeding them every day. Complaining to the Lord, and the Lord is feeding them every day. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, 
Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bidden, when he looketh upon it shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bidden any man, when he beheld the serpent of uh, brass, he lived. But then, uh, do you know that many of them, this is Israel, in Israel's history, do you know that many of them were still too stiff-necked? For God had made a way. God had said, here's the remedy for your complaint, and here's the remedy for the judgment that I sent uh, before you. But many of them were too stiff-necked to move their neck up to look upon the serpent. All right, all right. Mm-mm. Uh, 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 and so then, when we get back over to, let's go back over to uh, 2 Kings, the 18th chapter. It says in 2 Kings, the 18th chapter, that in verse 4, well, verse 3, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David, his father, did. We're talking about Hezekiah now. So we move from Ahaz to talking about his son, Hezekiah. He removed the high places mm -hmm. and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. What well, we just read about. Now, why did he have to do that? For unto those days, the children of Israel did burn incense to it. And he called it. Nekushtan, Nekushtan. Now, which simply means it's something brass, something made of brass. They have fallen so low, y'all. They have fallen so low that they were just worshiping just whatever. They're just worshiping whatever. Lady Deborah, if you're not very careful, you'll stop worshiping God, and, and you'll start worshiping just stuff. You will. It's like in church. You know, I think I said something when, you know, the communion table. I said something up there one day, and Lord have mercy. It was like I had spit in God's eye. Right, right. Wasn't nothing but a table. But they worship that stuff. Don't touch that table. Yeah. Oh, she yeah, no, that, that is so true. It, and, and you, <laughs> before you know it, and not just that, Pastor, but they'll begin to worship uh, days, mm -hmm. yeah. different days. Uh, different rituals, mm -hmm. you know, it becomes something more than what it is. It becomes more than what it is. And so, uh, you know, the traditions of man. We want something that we can see. You know, like the woman uh, with John 4, was something that we're supposed to worship here or worship there. And he told you, know, you worship, you know not what. Yes. So God is a spirit. Yes. You can't, you can't, you can't. Spirit and truth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All of that is true. And so we can see even through Israel how it just happens. You know, you know, you got the serpent here. OK, well, we're just looking for some way out. So we're just going to start worshiping the serpent. And then, you know, it's got to, you know, it's got to grieve God. You know, it's just like if, if you're taking somebody, your children, and you raise them from nothing and you 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 made you, you help them get where they are. And then said somebody have them to get up and speak and talk about, you know, their journey and everything. They name everybody, <laughs> but don't say nothing about you. Well, you're going to feel some kind of way about it. You know, you did it because you loved them, but yes. how are you going to set up and get all these full credit? And, you know, and, and that's how we do God. We brag on our denomination. We brag on what we have done and whatever. And, and we never get around. To, and all the praise and glory belong to him. Come on now. Yes, it does. You know, we say that lightly, but it's the honest truth. It's the honest truth. When you, when you, when it all, when the rubber meets the road. Yes. Let him withdraw his help. You'll find out then. You don't want him to withdraw. Mm-mm. Y'all, all the praise, all the glory belongs to him. So, he is worthy. Go back to uh, Second Chronicles, the 29th chapter. So, we begin to talk about the revival and the reform of Hezekiah, the godly king. We began to talk about the revival. Now, this is a true revival. We talk about, you know, 
revivals or, you know, around here in different churches and everything. But now Hezekiah had to have a true revival because uh, Judah had fallen so low. You know, they, they were unconscious, so they had to be resuscitated, brought back to life. They had to be revived. And y'all, I mean, y'all messing up bad. This is the city of David. God promised there was going to be somebody on this throne uh, from his lineage uh, forever. Now, y'all messing up real bad. And Lady Deborah, go, going back to the prior uh, example we had, I can give them a bigger pass with that because God had given them a religion. And it was a certain thing they were supposed to do. They were supposed to circumcise the, the young children. Uh, they were supposed to uh, uh, keep the temple. They were supposed to give tithes so that the, the priest and, and the, the poor would be taken care of. They had certain things that God had told them to do. And yes. he said, if you keep my commandments and statutes, then he would leave them in the land. Mm -hmm. And they would leave doing what he told them. And so they need to be revived. They need to be brought back to what God told them. But we, have, we, we don't have any, yes. any ordinance. We don't have any kind of uh, these rituals or all that. Colossians said all of that was nailed to the tree. Yes. And so we don't have any of that to return back to. Right. The only thing that we return back to is our faith in God. You don't yes. need a revival. Yes. You, you just believe God, you know. Amen. But you can get so discouraged and you, I guess, get off or whatever. I don't know what causes you to lose faith. It's, it's, it's it, you know, as I, I think I mentioned this last uh, Sunday. Do you, you have pain avoidance? You have pain management. You know. So. My thing is, is I start to looking at people instead of looking at God. Yeah. And this, this made me sick because I said, all of this is a joke. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a joke. This ain't real. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't born in church. I've been out in the streets. I know this is a game. This is the same stuff. Mm -hmm. This is the same stuff. They were running in the game. You know, you, and I know it's about money. Because until some money brought up, you ain't smiling, you ain't nothing. But let some money get brought up, everything is fine. Let me get some money. I'm all right now. That sounds like me. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I'll write it in, chapter 29. I'm in Second Chronicles, chapter 29. I'm at the third verse, chapter 29, verse 3, and we're talking about Hezekiah now, talking about how, you know, we talk about how he had to have revived. He had to, okay? He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them because you remember how his father had shut up the doors and how everything had gone into disrepair, uh, how uh, he had just everything, he just had fallen down on his job as the leader. Okay, so Hezekiah, the first thing, he cleansed the temple. He didn't waste any time getting them back to worship, true, uh, the true worship of the true and living God. And so now the first thing you're going to do then, if you go into the temple, then you got to have somebody to have the ministry of the temple. You got to get the priest back, right? And so the priests got to sanctify themselves to do the work that they had been ordained to do uh, uh, from Moses. Okay, so uh, God had pulled out a tribe. And what tribe was that? Levi. The Levites. He had pulled out the Levites and said, this is what you're going to do. All, the only thing you're going to do is you're going to operate in the temple. You're going to have the ministry of the temple. And so in verse 4, he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them together into the east street. And said unto them, hear me, ye Levites, mm -hmm. sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. And I see you must see how far down. Now, this is your job. You got to see about the temple, but you have been here and allowed this to happen. You've allowed this to happen. So now you got to sanctify yourself. You got to set yourself apart from all this other stuff and do what God ordained you to do. Uh, for our fathers have trespassed 
and done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God and have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord and turned their backs. Also, they have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel. Wherefore, the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he had delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, and to hissing, as ye see with your eyes. Mm -hmm. For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. My sons, be not now negligent. Be not now negligent. When it comes to the things of the Lord, be not now negligent like you have been in the past. It's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to come back to life and take your rightful position, take your place to do what God, he says, for the Lord has chosen you. The Lord chose you. I didn't do it, but the Lord did. The Lord has chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, that ye should minister unto him and burn incense. You know, sometimes all you need, sometimes uh, some of us, Brother Shea, all we need is a good talking to. Sometimes all we need is a good talking to, to 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 cause our hearts to and our eyes our eyes to like come open a little bit, cause our hearts to melt a little bit. Somebody can prick your heart. Oh my God, they talk to you, and sometimes they don't even have to be fussing at you. That's true. They don't have to fuss at you, and you start thinking about it, Sister Dorothy, and you start thinking about it. You know what? I've been a big fool. I've been foolish. I've been foolish, and I need to do better. You got to talk to yourself like that sometimes. After somebody talked to you, you start talking to yourself. I, I need to do better. This is not getting me anywhere. So they got a good talking to. Then they rose up. Mm-hmm. 14 of them. 14 of them. They gathered, and I'm in verse 15, and they gathered their brethren and sanctified themselves and came according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. So they went in and they, they, they began to, to clean up uh, the temple. They started with the Holy of Holies and then they went to the holy place and it took them about 16 days. That's a lot of cleaning. It took them about 16 days to complete that work. 16 days. They had stuff in there like to other gods. They had other gods and, you know, no telling what else they had been doing when you talk about filthiness, you know. You could always equate filthiness with something lewd, uh, something, you know, immoral. Uh, and so just filthy. Uh, they had broken down. Remember, the vessels also had been broken down. So then you had to re do that, you know, clean up and and replace and put, put things back the way that they were supposed to be. Uh, and so, yes, just, it had just got, it was just filthy, filthy on different levels of filthy. And so uh, then he, be, he restored temple worship, you see. Um, uh, Pastor, look at a uh, verse... Um, Verse uh, 19, moreover, all the vessels which King Ahaz and his reign did cast away in his transgression have we prepared and sanctified. And behold, they are before the altar of the Lord. So you have two extremes. You have Ahaz, who was arrogant, an arrogant idol worshiper. But then you have his son, Hezekiah, who's coming in with revival in his heart. Coming in with a revival in his heart. I see now why we don't have revivals. Because actually what they are is, it's a return to work. It's a return to doing. And actually, as a, as a, as a member of the body of Christ, it's not about what you do. As a matter of fact, God has condemned what you do. And he has caused you to... Uh, to walk in the spirit and not in your flesh. 
And so it's not about what you do, but it's by faith that you reckon yourself as dead is no longer, no longer you, but it's Christ that's in you. Uh, so I just, from, from this, I can just see, I don't know why God does what he do, does, you know, a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But I can see now why we don't have revivals like uh, normal churches do. Because there's nothing that we need to return to do. Because when I used to go to revival, it was so that I would get back busy. I need to start back going to Bible study. I need to start reading my Bible more. I need to start praying more. I need to do this and I need to do that. And the freedom of knowing that it's by grace and not by works is knowing that if I give up to God, God will begin to work within me. Amen. And it will be, it'll be real works mm -hmm. instead of my works. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor Belan. Anybody else? Okay, so it took them 16 days to complete the work because it was a great work to do. Then afterwards, he consecrated uh, the temple. And so uh, in that consecration, then the king and the rulers of the city met together, uh, and then they offered sacrifices the way they were supposed to be done. They brought sacrifices for the kingdom. When I say the kingdom here, I'm talking about the entire kingdom because we already know what the northern kingdom was doing. They, you know, so bad that they had, you know, they're going on off into uh, captivity in uh, Syria. Uh, they worship an idols at every turn. And so now they brought sacrifices for the entire kingdom, the temple and the kingdom of Judah, though, in particular. Uh -huh. So they had the sin offerings, which the sin offerings we know to atone for the sins of the people and the priests uh, and that included all Israel. Then they had the burnt offerings uh, to uh, symbolizing the total dedication to the Lord. And so it wasn't just for the leaders. It wasn't just for the leaders, it was for the people, the congregation had to sanctify themselves and brought their offerings as well. And then Hezekiah celebrated Passover. Look at uh, 2 Chronicles, the 30th chapter. And look at, uh, let's go down to, uh, let's go down to um, verse 8. So now he's, he's, he's getting ready to, to, to uh, celebrate the Passover. And so in that, he's inviting everybody. Because now we're talking about, you, you know, uh, the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom. Let's just, let's just all come together. Mm -hmm. This is the time we need to come together. Because remember, Passover was a national celebration. Everybody. And remember, the reason they're having the Passover is because that was a commemoration. They're going back in their mind. They're going back in their mind, and they're remembering how when they were down in Egypt, how God delivered them. You know, the final plague was the death of the firstborn, the firstborn uh, son. And, lady, you, you know, we were talking about the faith. I have to remember in order, Mother Nun, to know who God is. And once, when I know who God is, like, you know, he had them to, you know, have this commemorative festival, the, the Passover, so that it, in their mind they would remember that God is a deliverer. Yes, yes. God is a deliverer. Yes. Well, s sometimes, you know, you don't feel that way. <laughs> and so you can't walk by your feelings. I stopped, I stopped worrying about my feelings, and I, then, I rem, then I remember who God is. Come on now. Remember who God is. Yes. Because it gets dark sometimes. Some, a lot of things hurt. Yes, sir. But yes, when sir. I remember who God is, yes. and then I have to rest in that. And that's by faith. That ain't by what I do. Yes. And, and you know, I'm so glad that y'all don't have me busy just working, working, doing this, doing that, doing that. And I'm not going to pastor like other folk pastor and everything. You just you don't have no time with, for your family. Because you're running here and running there about everything, silly stuff, silly stuff. And a lot of times, people just want attention. They just want attention, you know? And then, you know, on your deathbed, them same folks that you ran here and ran there for, you don't see them nowhere, and it's your children and your wife that's there, right? but you ain't spend no time with them. Yeah, yeah. And you don't know nobody that you don't spend no time with. You know of them, but you don't know them. My Lord. Amen. Mother and I had your daughter laughing, you know, uh, who's getting ready to be first lady. Uh, and so uh, I had her laugh, and I said, well, you know, I don't really consider myself a traditional first lady. 
you know, um, for the people calling me with the problems and everything. I say, ask your mama. They call me, I to tell them, no, don't be calling me. Because <laughs> I got my own problem. <laughs> now, you don't have to be a first lady like that. That's just the kind I am. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and really, they have not helped the people. You know what I'm saying? You look at folks and say, well, why, why is he your pastor and everything? But he's so nice. Yeah. But you know, yeah. God ain't called you to be nice. Yeah. God called you to lead. Yeah. God called you, look, it's just like a parent who running around with his child, talking we friends and whatever. You need to quit being friends and teach this. We are old school like that. Oh, we're definitely old school that way. So I'm going to say this, and then we're going to go ahead and in, in this portion and pick up here next um, Sunday. So then he sends out an invitation to everybody. Y'all, come on. Let's, let's come back together. Let's unite for this celebration. Let's go back and let's remember and let's give God the praise for how he delivered us and how he's still delivering us. Let's just come together as, as a nation. So he says, look, in verse 8, chapter 30, verse 8, now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves, y'all, oh my God, yield yourselves unto the Lord and enter into his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. But again, uh, listen, look, look at what, what they did. Go to uh, verse 10. So the post, he's sending, you know, sending out the, the notice. Y'all come on over. Come back to Jerusalem for this. Post passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh and even unto Zebulon. But look what they did. But they laughed them to scorn and mocked them. And mocked them. When, <laughs> when you get to a point you don't want God's help, then ain't nothing for nobody to do but look at your shaky head. And keep walking and, and keep walking. Hey, Deborah, I'll tell you, God has called us to peace. And you sitting around worrying about folk because they won't do this and won't do that. That ain't none of God. That's the devil. <laughs> Look, if you in as bad a shape as you say you are, every one of us need help, don't we? Every one of us need help, don't we? But when you see the help, when the help is right there, and you are so stiff-necked that you won't receive the help. Ain't nothing nobody can do for you. Right. Give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody. 